which brings us to the second French Revolution. Remember that the European power reestablished the French monarchy after Napoleon. So the kings and queens of Europe brought the monarchy back after Napoleon. King Charles X of the Bourbon dynasty, so the same family that Louis XVI was of, attempted to rebuild an absolute monarchy in France. This failed. It's completely failed. The people of France liked being French. They were nationalists. They liked their freedoms. They liked their republic. They liked their Napoleon. So this failed, uh, leads to a civil war and an uprising, all in the name of democratic government. The Second French Revolution ultimately ends in the establishment of Louis Napoleon, one of Napoleon's nephews, being crowned Emperor of France. This is the guy right here. Let's switch over to Russia for just a few minutes. So Russia, big country over here, still around, lost a war against the Ottoman Empire over the Crimean Peninsula. If that name sounds familiar, it's because the Russians just took the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine not that long ago. This major defeat showed the world how backward Russia was compared to the rest of the world. In an attempt to forestall revolution, Tsar or King Alexander II in serfdom, something that had been done in the rest of Europe about 300 years before. So remember, serf is just a peasant who is attached to the land they can't leave. In Italy, Italy had been broken into small states since the collapse of the Roman Empire. France, Spain, Austria, and other countries spent almost a thousand years fighting over who would rule Italy. We talked about the Italian Wars, and we talked about uh, the Prince and Niccolo Machiavelli. Now, with Enlightenment and nationalistic ideals kind of running rampant in Italy, a guy by the name of Camillo di Cavour unites Italy into one country for the first time in 1400 years. So, if we look at the, the GIF or the GIF over on the right, we see Italy slowly becoming one country. So this is Italy in 1860. Give it just a second. It'll reset. So this was Italy in 1829. Uh, 1829, the duchy of several duchies uh, clearly united. 1847, they get a few more. This is the kingdom of Sardinia. That's who Camillo di Cavour works for. This island right here is known as Sardinia. So they've slowly gotten more land in Italy, slowly expands. This is the papal states. Remember, the pope had land. Um, these are all the lands that the uh, pope ruled. This is the kingdom of two Sicilies. They start getting land here. Um, they take Apulia in 1860. Um, the dashed lines just means that they're warring, so they're, they're warring for those lands. Um, they liberate Naples in 1860, and it slowly gets bigger and bigger. Eventually, they take out the Papal States, including Rome, and they move the capital to Rome. Up here, this part, Kingdom of Venetia, this was actually owned by the Austri uh, Austrian Empire, so Germans. Um, they actually get this back from the Austrians as well. So you can see Italy, one pretty little country, 1871. Germany. Similar things happen in Germany that happened into Italy. So Germany was broken up into small states for much of the period following the collapse of Rome. We talked about the Holy Roman Empire and how basically all of the little countries made up one big country known as the Holy Roman Empire. And the emperor, uh, who was generally the Duke of Austria, um, kept those countries safe from foreign powers. Now another, a, Ger a German state known as Prussia, up here, this is Prussia, with the help of its chancellor, a guy by the name of Ottoman Bismarck, uses nationalism to eventually unite Germany into one country. He says, look, just because you live in Bohemia, just because you live in Hanover, just because you live in Holstein or Bavaria, you're still German. 
And we should all have one country. There should be one German country for the Germans, just like there's one Italian country for the Italians, and there's one country for the French known as France. So, slowly Prussia takes and eats up all the little countries in the Holy Roman Empire, um, or what was left of the Holy Roman Empire after it was dismantled by Napoleon. Um, there's quite a bit of German land in the hands of France at this point. They fight a war over it called the Franco-Prussian War. Um, with the conclusion of that, King Wilhelm I of Prussia, so the king of Prussia, becomes the king of the German Empire, or the Reich. This is the first German Reich. So this is Europe in 1815, so this was the Congress of Vienna following Napoleon. This is what Europe looks like right before World War I. So you can see Germany here is split into pieces. Here it's gotten bigger. Um, you can see France has lost some land here and here. You see Italy is unified. You see the Ottoman Empire has lost quite a bit of land. Greece is now free, as is Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia. Um, Russia is pretty much the same. Poland is no longer existing in either one. Spain stayed the same. Great Britain stayed the same. Um, this sets the stage for World War I, which will be coming up in the next unit. Take a few minutes, answer your four daily objectives.